Ashmimu Muimu Morbien. Welcome to the Thickest Thieves podcast. We're Episode 12, I think? Yeah, 12. This is the, the podcast where the most handsome men in Hollywood discuss their monumental achievements in the field. <laughs> Let's get into it. What? I want to talk about cash. So, Aliki, what we got? Uh, I heard we're playing Jeopardy. And, okay. and let me just say this. RIP my boy. You know what I'm saying? RIP my What's boy. What's his name? Alec. Trebek? Yeah. Alec Trebek? Yeah, rest in peace to the king. Man, dude. What a, what a OG. Okay, well. All right. You got big shoes to fill. So we're going to play rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. The first person is going to choose the category and the point value. Once I ask the question, anyone can answer. The first to grab the water bottle gets to answer. So go ahead and put one water bottle on the ground. Let's get it. Okay, cool. Um, answer in the form of a Cheat question. Night. If you're correct, you get the points. If you are incorrect, those points get subtracted from your point value. All right. Also, if you're correct, you get to choose the next category and point value. We answer like a question? Yeah, what is, who is. Okay. At the end, there will be a final question where you wager your points for your final point value. A person with the most points is a person who loses. We'll have to dress up as the tat cat. Tat is thick as thieves, obviously. The tat cat for the remainder of the episode. Wow. Now, we'll go ahead and get started. Here's your board. Okay. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. So we got to grab the bottle when we think we have the answer? Yeah, whoever secures the Hold on, the do it again. Real quick. Answer. Put your hand. Whoa. The speed at which... Hey, hold on, bro. We're going to smack I'm knuckles just or sure. something. I'm just making sure. Ooh. Ooh. That was good. That was good. Fuck them. <laughs> All right. All right hey, cool, bro, cool. stop goofing off, bro. I'm ready, I'm ready. Do I'm ready. the podcast. Watch me win. My, my, what I'm trying to do for this one is I'm trying to get all of them wrong and then wager just an insane amount at the end because I know I'll get that one. All right, let's go on shoot. Is that what we're doing? Is there any more? Are we done? Uh, I was going to oh. tell you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. The categories. Oh, yeah, please. This is Jeopardy relating to Oppenheimer, if you can't tell. The categories are Christopher Nolan, more like Christopher Yeslin, Oppenheimer, I hardly know her, and Cillian Murph, hey. Okay. Okay. Values are 100, 200, 300. All right. Categories. All right. So we'll start off with rock, paper, scissors. On shoot, bro. That boy Ooh. cold with it. That boy cold with it. Okay, Nate. You get to select the first category and put value. I'm going stupid. Uh, Oppenheimer. <laughs> I hardly know her for three hundo. Okay. Don't forget to answer in the form of a question. Your question is, or I guess your answer is. Here we go. J. Robert Oppenheimer was the leader of this government project, which shares its name with the borough of New York. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> All you have to feel like you have to be safe. All right. What it do, the Manhattan Project. Correct. I did not know that, so there was no chance. The Manhattan Project. So, Nate, you have 300 I didn't know the name of the project, at least. There's some speed's not on my side, bro. the next category. Christopher Nolan, more like Christopher <laughs> Yeslin for two hundo. All right. Your answer is, this film won 94 of the 205 awards it was nominated for, including four Academy Awards, making it Christopher Nolan's most awarded film. <laughs> I am going to go with... Inception. What? You have to answer. answer oh, what? Question. What is Inception? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you, but you know, follow the rules, David. Okay, cool. Was the answer right? Thank yes. you for my points. <laughs> yes, <laughs> David. You That's not the way Jeopardy works. Work. My first game of Jeopardy. Thank you for the. What is it? You get to pick the next category. Um, I'll just go ahead and go Cillian Murph Hay for two honey. Okay, your answer is. Why did I choose? That? I just knew. I just found out about that man. Why did I choose that one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy is friends with fellow actors Liam Neeson and Colin Farrell, and the three of them share this same home country. <laughs> oh, I don't man. know. Oh, no. But I don't want to lose my points. Home country? You know what? I'm going to take a little risky risk. Okay, do it. Because I believe in myself to get my points back. Let's do it. I'm going to say, where is London? Incorrect. The answer was Ireland. Ireland? Really? Ireland. Also, she said country, bro. London's a city. Oh. I didn't know that, bro. I didn't either. Is Ireland? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. I didn't know they were Irish. Yeah. All right, let's go, dude. Um, let's go. Christopher Nolan, more like Christopher Yeslin for three hundred. Your answer is released in two thousand one. This is Christopher Nolan's breakthrough film. Oh, what is Memento? That's Correct. what it. I dang it. That's good. I, I actually, that's the only one I haven't seen. It's it's good. Uh, it's good. That's what they still. <laughs> it's it's ambitious. I I didn't enjoy it as much as his other films, but it's also it's his like you know what I'm saying. Is that the one where they're like going to steal <laughs> they, art? No, nah, in Memento, they basically play the end of the film first, and they then they keep playing more of the beginning, so it fills the story in. So it's like the story, but backwards, and then oh, you get the full you. context of why everything happened. I see. I see. I see. That's yeah, pretty cool. It's, it is interesting. Good job, dude. That was three hundred. So you got what six hundred now? I got six hundred. I got zero. Yeah. Um, sounds like our bank. Oppenheimer. Accounts. What? Sounds similar to our bank accounts. <laughs> Oppenheimer. I hardly know her. For one hundred. Let's run it. 100. Okay, your answer is Oppenheimer is Christopher Nolan's second movie about wartime events. What is his first Oh! <laughs> oh Yay! Oh. oh, all right. All right. What is what you is Dunk? The cat on the water. What is Dunkirk? Give me my hundred. The cat was on it. Bro. <laughs> okay. It exploded. That was such a crazy. Wait, we need a other we need another <laughs> item. All right, yo, we need to uh, Greg, we get some paper towels. It was inevitable that was going to happen, bro. <laughs> okay, David, you get to pick the next category. While Greg goes and gets paper towels, we're going to go for Oppenheimer. I hardly know where for two honey. Dos hanutos. Well, that's not how you say that. <laughs> the answer is Oppenheimer is a movie about J. Robert Oppenheimer, who is known for creating what? Oh, you got that one. That's what is one. the atomic bomb? Correct. No, that's not right. <laughs> dude, that's not right. I dude. can't wait to watch what that looked like because, it, dude, it exploded all over the back. That's going to be wild. That was Here, an easy one. Bro, help me. Help no. me, bro. Let's, let's do this for the podcast, bro. We need to show them that we care about our set. Why did we choose a bottle? <laughs> All right. Wait, oh, it's there, me. It's, it's me. All right, let's go with um, Cillian Murph Hay for 300. All right, your answer is two decades ago, Cillian Murphy auditioned for the role of Bruce Wayne in Christopher Nolan's. Uh, Put it down. I got to wait. You have to wait. He auditioned for the role of Bruce Wayne in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Nolan chose Christian Bale for the role, but he cast the unknown Murphy as this character. Dude, I don't even know if I know the answer. I just Go know ahead. he's in the movie. Go ahead. <laughs> I just know he's in the movie. But isn't he supposed to be... You gotta say what it is, bro. I know, but what... Okay. You snatched it confidently. I did. I'm just gonna take a stupid guess and say, uh, who is Scarecrow? <gasps> that is correct. Dang, you knew I'm it. Just, I'm just straight. You trust, I just yes. straight. Okay, I Let's just go, straight trusted dude. my Batman knowledge at that point. It was Doctor Jonathan Crane, aka the Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have two categories left, David. Which one would you like? All right. I'm gonna. Tr- okay. What's Christopher Nolan more like? Christopher Yeslin for a honey. All right. Your answer is come July 21st. Christopher Nolan's most recent release will be Oppenheimer. Today, Christopher Nolan's most recent release is this. Oh my gosh, bro. (laughs) See that? Okay. (laughs) He didn't want to practice it. I about threw my shoulder out of place. (laughs) Today, his his most recent release, what is Tenet? Correct. Smack my damn hand. And now we just have one category left. So we're going with Cillian Murphy for 100. Cillian Murphy's first job in the entertainment industry was this, which, as we learned last week, is something both Nate and David have also done. I don't know, bro. What do we? We we've, we've both done a lot of things. This is crazy. I know. I'm scared. I'm scared. But we learned it last week, which makes it more specific. But, but what did we learn about each other that we didn't know before last week? A leak you took note of on the podcast. Hey, that's not fair because I didn't get a review link and Nate did. 
to the podcast. So, bro, let's just you watched it. Your your knowledge is more sharp. You know what, bro? Let's just let's just, let's just knock this off. The- <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna- we 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 deny that question. What is playing in a band? Whoa! Whoa. Hey. Playing in a rock band. Oh, dude. Really? I didn't know Cillian Murphy did that, but... Well, I didn't know he was, you know... And I didn't realize that was him in that ba- uh, Batman movie, either. I just realized that was him and also Peaky Blinders. <laughs> oh, you I killed really it, though. Enough. Wait, I'm I'm up, though. What's the, what's the score? Okay, so the final score, David has 500. Nate has 800. However, we have the final question, which has a wager. Okay, so you can go ahead and get your paper and Sharpie. Mm. Okay. So, David, your total points are 500, Nate, you're 800, but you can wager any amount. So, if you wager your full amount and you're incorrect, you have zero points. Does that make sense? Gotcha. So, I'm going to ask the question, then you're going you're gonna to write down your answer and your wager. Then you're going to show us both and we're going to do the final score. All right. Okay. Okay, the final question. Hold on. I'm doing my wager right now, right? We have to do it first. No, you can hear the question. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's all okay. I need. okay. <laughs> um, how many months did it take to film Oppenheimer? Mm. To film it, not to edit, film. like just the, just the production. Just to film. Oof. <sighs> I'm changing my answer again. Ah. <laughs> oh. Also had a high budget, so that usually means that they had a lot of shoot days. But also they were dude, dropping, hey, they hey. were also dropping bombs. So I don't know the balance of budget versus what they were using for a crew versus let's move, let's move this along, actual dude. practical. Um, dude, you're doing a whole lot of yapping over there. Well, you know, there's audio listeners. I'm trying to make the show better for all of the listeners. You're just delaying your um, inevitable demise. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Dang, dude, I think my answer is wrong. I don't know. I said 32 months. That's a, a couple years to film just alone. Oh, man. That's not abnormal. I'm just, I went nine months. What's your wager? 300. And yours was 208? Yeah. The correct answer was four months. Wow. Jeez. Four I knew. I knew that 32 is... 32 they, seems, they seems never very see. excessive. I guess with filming. I didn't really... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I was thinking about everything. So the final my bad. score is Nate with 600 points and David with 200 points, which means that David's going to have to be the tag cat for the rest of the episode. <clears throat> Let's go, dude. I love how I wish Jeopardy worked in the way the other games worked, where, you know, like, the answer closest. I would have got. <laughs> I would have took a dub right there. We actually would have tied. No, we wouldn't. We would have lost points. <laughs> I don't want to wear that hat. <laughs> the tag hat, dude. What, what, uh... What kind of stuff are you into these days, bro? What's the next subject? <laughs> What's the next? It's the thickest item? Thing cat, bro. You're the thickest thing cat. What's You're the, the next embodiment. Item? <laughs> What's the next item? I'm done. I'm done doing it. I'm not entertaining I- this. <laughs> okay, listen, bro. We uh, we went to see the UFC fight yesterday at a theater of all places, which is kind of crazy. Um, I didn't even know that was a thing, to be honest. Um, yeah. What do you think of the the? I mean, you've watched. So we've seen UFC fights at my house at a bar in Miami and the theater. What's your favorite bar? I think the bar was yeah. bar was kind of lit. What Sports up? bar. Yeah, the, the idea, I think it was so cool to do the experience once. The idea of watching a UFC fight at a theater sounds cool because the screen is big and stuff, but um, the food is expensive. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it is. It's just too, like, it's not interactive enough unless you have a full theater of people. Yeah, yeah. Was, Even then it feels it innately, innately natural to stay quiet. Well, what, what, did you, what did you think of the fights? Dude, I mean... Yo, there was like some of the I don't you you watch a lot more UFC than I do, mm-hmm. but the uh th- some of the fights were crazy, dude. The we're, one right before the main one with Volkanovski and the other dude. Bro, you're talking about the going, one before that, Pantoja yes, and uh, bro, they were going Brandon stupid. Moreno. That was probably one of the best fights I've ever seen. They were going stu- one of the best fights we ever seen was hi- what's his name? Hom- Hazmat? No. <laughs> Homslot. What's his name? Homslot. Homslot. Sir, sir Homslot. <laughs> Not uh, Hamza Chamayev and Gilbert Burns. Yeah, Gilbert banger. Burns, but them boys are squabbing. That is up there with my favorite fights. I think this one now is, and then Dustin Poirier and Dan Hooker. I think those yeah. are three of my favorite fights of right. all time. Yeah, it was good, dude. What'd you think? I, I mean, dude, I, I thought it was an amazing card. I didn't expect Dreykus to win. 
uh, beating Robert Whitaker. Oh, yeah. In fact, I liked TKOing his, him I liked his energy crazy. a lot. He was fun. Yeah, no, he he is. I thought the Izzy situation. I was doing too I think much. That, I think that looked bad on Izzy. I know. I know it's like creating the moment. So in one hand, you know, you put the the business and like internet culture hat on, but on the other hand, you actually did just kind of rob him of his moment. And I don't. I actually don't think it looked favorable on Izzy to the majority of people. So. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think. Uh, I don't really. I think he just put on a show. I just don't like that he just kept saying nigga over and over again. It's like, bro. <laughs> Yeah, and also he bought this like he brought this like political aspect to it, which was like, we'll we'll look at your 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 ancestry and see if you're yeah. really from Africa. Yeah, 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 it goes. It doesn't matter if I'm from Africa or not if you can catch these hands. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I, I just think that <clears throat> he's trying. It was like he's trying to do WWE, but he like blurred the line of like the showmanship and like what he really felt. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, it was true. like yeah, it was like um, yeah. It was weird. And then and then Volk, dude, and I like Iggy. Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea, dude. Um, yeah, and, and Volk is just to me. Volk is. I mean, he's definitely number one pound for pound. That dude is. Every time I watch him fight, bro, he looks like a hoss. He he makes he makes the next best fighters who are also like top tier look amateur. Yeah, he did that with Yair. He did that with Max Holloway before that on the on their most recent uh-huh. fight, and then he fought uh, a guy named the Korean Zombie, or like that's his nickname. And absolutely, just like the Korean zombie, I don't even think had a single moment in that fight where really? anything happened. And he's a beast too. Yeah, like these are all like yeah. the top people in the division, and and Volk is just making. I mean, he's is Volk I mean, beating Russian? the shit out of them. He no, a, no, he's a he's Australian. Australian. What's yeah. his name? Sounds <clears throat> Russian. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, I have a business idea for Chuck E. Cheese. Okay, What's Chuck that? E. Cheese loads their places up with TVs. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of dads who love to see a lot of dads and moms who love to see UFC. Chuck E. Cheese start displaying the fight at their establishments. Mm-hmm. The kids can go play, and then parents you, can watch. The parents UFC. can watch the fight, bro. Dude, uh, y'all Chuck, can have Chuck that Cheese free. is where furries started, bro. So that's kind of like your, you know, origins. I'm not. Can wearing, I get a meow? I'm not wearing this again. I'm not <laughs> meowing right now. <laughs> I'm not. Me- Let me get a meow, dude. I'm not meowing. Just right one. Now. Just a- no. No, I'm not doing that ninja stuff, bro. That's something ninja would have done. I do not respect that man. <laughs> okay. Well, dude, uh, the next <laughs> How time. How do you respect me after this, bro? As uh, a friend. I mean, I haven't respected you for a long time. So really, the cat ears are kind of the least of your. Whatever you do, Greg and Aliki and Nate, don't send these clips to Kevin because like, she still has to be attracted to me for us to work out. It's, it's a. She's going to get the ick when she sees this. Hey, listen. <laughs> Just don't send it then because that's hey, listen, actually detrimental. You do realize Aliki that this is going to be a public clip posted on all of our socials. The fish oil and stuff is one thing, but if you ruin my actual love life, <laughs> I will shin kick you to oblivion. Wait, this like, this punishment you don't want to eat fish. This punishment you ruins your entire happy. life from this moment forward. Like you can never recover. Like Hollywood won't hire you. It's the turning point. This is That's clown crazy. material, bro. So the next time we are in a theater is going to be to see the Barbie movie. Now, our friends, we got a friend group together and we said, "Are we seeing the Barbie movie or Oppenheimer before we go on the cruise?" And we were outvoted to go see the Barbie movie over Oppenheimer, bro. We just didn't vote. That's the problem. We got to get in there and vote. But if we vote, boys and girls, what? How? That's, that's true. But I think we were still outnumbered, bro. I think Casey wanted to see the Barbie movie, Are we? and all the girls wanted to see the Barbie movie. They didn't want to see no movie about bombs. How we know? How? Oh, I don't know. Look, I'm I'm cool to see the Barbie movie, but like, anyway, dude, let me tell you something crazy about the Barbie movie, though. The Barbie movie is banned in Vietnam. And they're trying to ban it in the Philippines. And the reason for that is because there's a scene in the Barbie movie where they're portraying a map. Uh, and the map is of the world and it's kind of just sketched out. It's like, it's, it's totally doodled. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a real map in, in that same sense, but yeah. they're trying to tell Barbie about the, the world that exists outside of her situation. Right. But there is off of the coast of what they have listed there as Asia, there's this dotted line that they runs through on the map. And what, what that is, or what they're claiming that that is, is what's called the, the nine dash line. And that is China basically is, is establishing that they own the part of the South China Sea and the, and the trade routes and things of that nature. And so why Vietnam and the Philippines have such an issue with this is because China is a big superpower and they're like encroaching on, uh, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the sea space of, you know, that surrounds all of these Asian countries. And not only that, I was looking uh, 
uh, on Essentially YouTube. Essentially, what you're saying is that China right. goes. China, that's, that's mine, yeah. mine, yeah. mine. <laughs> that's what they're doing. Yeah, that's China was saying? like, China was like, this is ours now. Like, and, I don't and, know if China understands the concept of a kids movie. It's PG thirteen. Do you know what Barbie is? It's an action figure for little girls, and everything in oh, you're there. Oh, t- you're talking about uh, you're talking about Vietnam, Vietnam, China, whatever. It's like any any p- person who bans a, a uh, kids movie because the map isn't accurate is stupid, bro. That's the goofiest thing ever. Well, that so is the goofiest thing ever. Their, their claim, though, their claim though is that it was in. I mean, it, it was intentionally drawn on there. I mean, because it's it's a dotted line in the exact area and space. So it's like it's like a thing. Oh. That, it, it's a thing that Vietnam is like. This does not exist. They do not get to claim this area. And and the reason it's particularly offensive to a lot of people in in Vietnam is because there have been like cases where Chinese military have bullied and sometimes even attacked like fish or fishermen boats and stuff for being in that in that area. So. It's it's kind of hotly contested. I think the Philippines is maybe looking to not ban it, but they're they're potentially looking at um, at just putting a disclaimer at the beginning of the movie that says there's a depiction in here that it is inaccurate. Yeah, that's but goofy. That's crazy. That's goofy. Also, you know what else the Barbie? I get Barbie I get do? what they're 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 upset about something, but you know, people got to be so, stop being so butthurt, bro. Some movie. Yeah, I'm sure that like there's a movie, like they didn't get mad at Tropic Thunder. Vietnam didn't get mad at that movie. That movie's mad disrespectful to Vietnam. Yeah. They got people in, like, just people in there just speaking just in stupid ass accents. Yeah. They get, like, people are tripping, dude. They gotta get yeah. over that. And yeah. it's like, I get what, I mean, look, I get it to a certain extent. Like, it'd be terrible to make a, a movie, like a comedy film that, it's not even a comedy. Is it a comedy? I don't, I mean, I haven't seen it. Oh, I don't, so know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Stupid. Don't agree yeah. with it. Well, dude, you know what else, you know what the Barbie movie did, bro? What? They uh they caused a a pink paint shortage <laughs> from all the stuff that they painted. They they had this specific hue of pink. It was like a fluorescent so fuchsia order. or something, dude. Enough to paint all the sets or whatever. And I think this is also combined with like the COVID nineteen still like supply chain blockages and stuff. But yeah, they bought so much That's of this crazy. specific color of pink that uh you know we almost did weren't able to make this set because of the barbecue. That's movie. why it was the prices were so high on this yeah, pink. Yeah, we spent like. What was it, 1500 bucks on the pink paint? Yes, dude. And it, we had to buy it on eBay. They were charging by the ounce. But I was like, we had to. <laughs> they were charging by the tablespoon. But yeah, crazy stuff about, about that. I wish we were going to see Oppenheimer, though, bro. Yeah, Before I wish we were seeing Oppenheimer. I don't, we're going to we see should, it. We should have voted because we definitely weren't outnumbered. It would have been just, if we would have all voted, Oppen, all the guys would have all, all voted. I, it would just have been at a draw. I think we'd have to fight. See it the day before the day after. We should, oh, we we should have, have we all have to, drew and then fought for it because we, we would have definitely to squab won. with the women, bro. Yeah. We might still have to see Barbie because I'm not going to lay hands on a leaky. That's right. I'm not going to do that because I respect yeah. oh, that's true. Oh, now that's true. his tune has changed. Let's roll the clip from last week. <laughs> a leaky, come. I will give you these knuckles to the jaw, bro. I'm not playing with you, bro. This wart will connect with your temple. <laughs> okay, a leaky. Do that again. <laughs> do that again. Interrupt me again. Interrupt me again. And watch how quick. <laughs> I believe the quote was, this war is going to come in contact with your temple. You will catch the human pamplonavirus <laughs> from brute impact from this war on your temple. It will enter your bloodstream. Oh, my goodness. Dude, we should leak a song of mine in the video that we did I'm very excited it about on, the song you got on the podcast. Out, I'm so excited about that. I think it's one of your best records. I mean, I think it's your best record, actually. I, I, it's up there for me for sure. Yeah. And I think the video stuff that were all the concepts and stuff look amazing as yeah. well. What? What do you say to that? What thank do I say? You. Oh, thank you. When, you, when I, someone gives you a compliment, Nate, thank you say, you. don't you say, he's thank you. spicy. He's mad. <laughs> don't you say, he's real anyways, mad. <laughs> anyways, I think y'all should check it out because I think it's a great, uh, a great song. And uh, dude, I can't wait to, for people to see the content. Oh, uh, dude, let's, let's throw it up. Let's we'll we'll throw it, one of them right now. Which one you want to do? Uh, let's do the truck one. Run it. Upon the struggles of those who have not been as fortunate. 
They say money corrupt everything, I wonder if it's true So I had to get a bunch of it to see what it could do Hit record, started hustling way back when I was in school Found my passion early on, but now my peers was privy Bitch. I had an ego, type of ego, make you win by busting through Bitch. Until that ego had me breaking ties with ones I knew Ooh. I killed that ego and got money hand in hand, it's something new That's that EQ that I learned while using EQ as a tool So why? The fuck am I tripping? I used to feel the littest that some shit was popping for me. Now I'm just feeling convicted. I got friends I grew up with that ain't here because addiction. I got friends that got kids and they still popping prescriptions. I got friends, I got, I got friends that had dreams that ain't turned out like they predicted. I got friends that turn hateful and vindictive. I got friends that had trauma as a kid but never fixed it. Now I'm hopping in that Tesla, but this ain't no Honda Civic. Ha! Level up. Level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. Have you tried Threads yet? You I'm threads? not. I won't. I haven't downloaded it yet. You won't? No. You're not going to. I'm not going to do it. It's just too much social media. I don't have Twitter. I don't even like social media at all, to be honest. But I just think that, dude. I don't have Twitter. I don't. Ha- I have social media. I have Instagram. I have Facebook. I don't even get on it. Um, I guess if you consider YouTube a social media, not really. Mm-hmm. But, dude, I just. I was. I used to have Twitter. I just always thought it. I don't have enough random thoughts throughout the day that I want to share with a mass amount of people yeah. that, to post. Yeah. And also consuming, as I've grown older and consume, I've heard that con- like Twitter's kind of a cesspool of negativity as well. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't need that in my life. I heard that some people use it as a news outlet. I heard you, you kind of use it as a news thing. You got a lot of people like following music and stuff like that. And it's like, I in political and like, I, I don't, don't really care. And I'll yeah. watch that on YouTube. Um, and threads to me just seems like a, a copy of that. And, if it's just Twitter, but Instagram or Meta's version of it, um, yeah. then it's not for me. And I just, I'm tired. What am I going to do? Get on, I got to start building a Twitter, a Meta yes. or a Threads yeah. platform now. It's, it's I'll so much. stay on Instagram. Dude, if I didn't have the music career and like, you know, if, if social media was not just a channel for building a personal brand, I wouldn't be on anything except YouTube. And that's if you consider that a social media channel. Th- I wouldn't be on anything except y- YouTube. Yeah, it sucks that we, that we need it. And, and I, you need I it more would, than I do because you have to be a personality. Yeah. I can get work without it. You know what I mean? I right, right. Like, yeah, I mean, if I was just a digital marketer still, yeah. like I would be, I would not be on them at all. I'd Yo, be, so, yeah. so, bro, did you hear, isn't there like some sort of like legal situation going on with threads and Twitter? And- no, Elon Musk sent a cease and desist to Meta. And I mean, he, he, he responded in a tweet that, you know, every, <laughs> he, every time he tweets, you know, it, it makes news, basically, but right. he said, uh, uh, competition is fine, stealing is not. Uh, and I, look, I, I tend to agree with him. Here's the thing with Instagram, and I've thought this for a while. Mm-hmm. Instagram is not taking any risks of their own. What they're doing now is it seems like they're desperately trying to cling on to market share by just making carbon copies of every other competitor that Reels, comes out. Reels, TikTok. They did that with stories, stories with Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah. And, and, what bothers me about it is number one, you're copying it just off rip. Like as soon as you have any kind of threat, you're just copying it, which I think is lame. Number one. Number two is they are doing that at the cost of what their platform is supposed to be. It used to elevate photography. It used to have a, uh, do you remember back when Instagram used to be sequential? In, in the timeline. Yeah, you've seen the most right? recent things from your friends, the people you want to see. Right, but they switched that up in order to accommodate ads. Algorithm. Ads, right, the algorithm yeah, and course. ads and, 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 you know, serving up stuff like that. And, but when you're just, you know, making a carbon copy of something, I, I just, to me, is, I am, I just don't have respect for the company and the, the lack of innovation that they're bringing to the table. Let me ask you this. Facebook did that, bro. Look at Facebook. What is Facebook? You have, you have marketplace on there. You have like the Facebook ads manager and business manager and at, at, you know what Facebook is to me now? Tools. Facebook is that one button I click to log into something quick now. Log in through Facebook. It's so common. That's what it is now. now. I don't even know. Like there's, it's too confusing. Like yeah. there's, my dad gets things. on Facebook still. Sometimes I get on there to catch it. I will like that. There's a personal thing there that you can like, oh, it's almost like the yellow books, yellow yeah. pages. Like you get on there, you can like kind of search up how people have been doing, see if they died or not, like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, but let me ask you this. So you're Instagram CEO, mm-hmm. I guess you're head of Instagram yeah. and they're like, you can either stay about elevating photography, sequential time or t- yeah, timeline, mm-hmm. like, or 
with the potential of falling behind and people forgetting about your platform because there's other ones that come out that may be better or changing things to make it what do you do like because i don't know if it's a binary like that and i'm not privy to all the information as to why they're making this decision i will say that instagram has such a user base that if they do implement something new it's very easy to get users over there and the biggest issue with social media companies from an investor perspective is they want to see how many active users you have before they can start giving you seed money in order to build it right so if you already are able to just take instagram which has however many you know like a billion users or whatever and you can just easily bring those people to a new site that they they build up it's going to immediately get off the ground quicker but what bothers me is that the lack of innovation and risk taking you're just watching a like i i value i value that look at what chick-fil-a did to to fast food. Fast mm. food, it, it, McDonald's innovated in like the 50s, right? Yeah. And McDonald's became amazing. But like, if you just think about fast food now, it's like poor service. The, the fast food, the line takes a long time and the, and the food is not that quality. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you're pulling up to the window and people are rude. And Chick-fil-A was right, like, hold right. it, we're just going to be exceptional at this. Fast food's been around for a long time, dog. And Chick-fil-A was like, hold up, how, how can we set this up to where we are just better and they innovated in the fast food space that's like let alone we're talking about technology so i mean i'm not saying you would have the answer to this question but how do you innovate social media is it because tiktok is essentially taking aspects of youtube now and trying to making 10 minute videos live so what what do you what like i know that's a genius type of answer because you got like i don't know i would say but like well youtube and tiktok have very fundamental differences because having a different video platform is not what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. instagram threads or whatever has a retweet button Mm -hmm. like a repost button it's like set up exactly the same way like it's it's a carbon copy like tick like on youtube you weren't just you you don't first off vertical content short form content uh, intrinsically tied with music initially. What? Right? TikTok was. Oh, gotcha. Intrinsically right. tied that. with music. And then it's, it's a, it's a scroll based platform. It's, it's also like mainly duetting, dis- main, well. duetting, mainly discovery based. Um, like YouTube has discovery and stuff, but you, you get a lot of people that you subscribe to. Yeah. Like if you're on the for you page, you're getting served new things. It's, 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 uh, so there are differences in, to me, it didn't. TikTok never felt like the experience of YouTube. I don't go you don't to think TikTok. It felt the, you don't think it felt like the experience for Vine? Uh, it's similar to Vine, but Vine went out of business. Right. So they kind of like took, took re- it in revamped and re- yeah. revived. Got you. You know. So I'm not mad about that either. Um, all that to say, though, like I said, to to make to reiterate my actual thoughts about it is that I just think that it's lame for a company to just claw as much market share that they can keep keep you know what i'm saying it seems desperate it seems like they are are they're not innovating they're not taking any risk they're not staying true to their user base Mm -hmm. they're just trying to chase trends and like my my analogy in music would be you know imagine drake all drake does is whenever a new top you know number one hit song on the billboard charts pops off he just makes a carbon copy of that song with slightly different lyrics right. exactly his, the yeah, same melody voice, structure everything right. and he just puts it out every single time so in a sense in a, in a business sense it works but to me it's mad lame and in fact legally if you were to do that with the music he would get sued immediately mm-hmm. so i mean i i think that elon musk is right in what he's doing in this situation and i've i've thought that a long time about about Instagram anyway. I think it's very distasteful that, you know, the people at Snapchat really built something of value and then Instagram just like <laughs> rips their entire idea and just implements it in their platform. Like that's so lame to me. But anyway, oh, man. I don't know. What oh, do you man. think? I mean, I agree. I agree with you. I just, it's hard for me to find the balance between like staying on top and trying to innovate. I definitely would be lean, lean more towards being innovative because, because I'm yeah. not as wealthy and huge as Instagram. If yeah. I'm Instagram and I'm making bread, it's hard for me to be like, what's the, what's in the best interest of the company? Because does, does Instagram become a vine at some point if everything else takes over? They don't actually know the answer to that. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that is out of desperation, like you're saying. I think time will tell, man. I think the market will, you know, I think a lot of people are off Facebook because it's like, what am I even doing on here? There's too much, too much going on. Or they Facebook's use it for doing specific- way too much, bro. But like Instagram might become that way eventually as well. I mean, TikTok. Twitter stay pretty simple. 
Twitter has been, which is, which is kind of, it stayed what it is, but, um, you know, I, I think Instagram did some things very well and they've abandoned a lot of things that they did very well. And that's what a lot of us really fell in love with Instagram for in the first place. And so Instagram by trying to be everybody else, eventually you're going to lose the identity of what this is. And then somebody like a place like TikTok is going to really just like we're off the Instagram thing. That's for old heads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And what, what's Some the people use even act that way. TikTok? Like my little brother only uses TikTok. Yeah. So, so and he's, you know, he's in that yeah. same age group, group as Greg. Yeah. You know, so like what millenn- is that uh, Gen Z, right? So like, right. What's wild. It's who knows. I, Instagram feels like more of a promotional platform. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like as a, as a rapper and stuff, it sucks that you have to kind of keep up with meta or whatever, the, whatever new social I mean, media I'm is on it. Out. I'm on Threads. it. Yeah, I I'm I downloaded threads. What is it? So like, okay, stuff. unbiased review. It right. Real I quick. don't really even use Twitter like that anymore. So so I mean, it's basically Twitter. Like it, yeah. the my review is yeah a timeline based thing that you can repost and you can you know That's look at po- text to people and it, you can attach photos and videos. There's nothing new about it. Does it have more? Is it more censored? I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I wonder what their censorship follow, stuff is. Because yeah. I feel like, bro, you get on Twitter sometimes. Bro, I used to get on Twitter and just see, like, just porn sometimes. I'd be like, bro, what is this? Oh. Like, you would, like, you see a video, it'd be like a, a model that, that would get flagged on Instagram, but she's like, has something on that's like in her crack. I'm like, damn, bro, like, Twitter oh. has no censorship or like, you know, have age, age or something. I don't know who you follow. I don't, I don't know, know what Twitter, your algorithm. <laughs> but if you get on Twitter, the things that get liked a lot when you first get on yeah. show up. So I would, I would just be like, okay, I would check it out. Bro, Facebook's <laughs> like that, bro. This bro, is bro the story thing. The Facebook stories, dude. Literally, the first like, okay, so it puts. I, I know I don't exactly know, what you're talking about. Also, I don't even know who my Facebook friends are. Like, I have a yeah. lot of Facebook friends that I don't know. I think that's true for a lot of people because yeah. there was a time when Facebook was like the main thing, and we were just confirming like anybody in our general area. Right. So I don't even know half these people, but. Every single time the Facebook stories are listed at the top, the, I know exactly what it's you're talking always about. like the most provocative photo. Right. Now people aren't doing the most on Facebook, but it'll be like and it's some not some, follow, some bikini picture or uh, and it's not. So I'm not getting served the people that I interact with the most. I'm mm-hmm. getting served random pages and stuff. It's just yeah. whoever clicks into the story and it's like always like bro, it's some kind of weird thirst. Instagram has kind of gotten like that. If you're not careful about your algorithm, you go to the discover page and it's just like it's just a promotional promotional timeline of people trying to get their only fans out yeah. there it's wild dude wild Mine's dude. full of ufc fights yeah UFC that's what i'm saying you gotta be careful if you if yeah, you treat your algorithm look. with diligence you can get that out of there yeah if you thirsty bro hey hey yo th- hey that's how you you start you want to you want to uh, expose some people bro look at their go to their dude, go, go to their be looking at what? Pay, yeah <laughs> bro yeah. i've seen this you know this is kind of exposing myself a little bit but i remember one time i was i seen this i was on the discovery page and i seen this girl and i clicked on it and i was like and I seen one of my favorite uh, commentators on uh, on YouTube like the photo, and I was like, I wonder how many other ones he liked. So I went through; he liked all of them. I was like, Yo, I was like, no, you got caught he's red-handed. Simping, bro. I was like, come on, dude. He's simping, bro. but also he's like, me, good, me, meanwhile, he's like, you're like, oh, he liked this one. I know, right? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he likes the, he likes the, he's like, he like plays the good guy movie reviewer. He's like super high personality, super good energy. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, I see you, boy. You yeah, like how yeah. she looks, huh? Yeah. I see it. Just- <laughs> also, dude, it's, it's so- like so funny when people also, get exposed like that. Even so, the fact that he even felt the need to like the photos yeah. is so strange to me because especially if you're a personality, you can skip it. You can skip. You can just look at it, yeah. but then, but then if you like it, then. But also, what what are you trying to do? Are you trying to let her know? Like her actual person be like, yo, dude, for, like for sure YouTuber. that when you liking her photos is not gonna do nothing. It's the dude that she's talking to in person. Yeah, them photos is not gonna do nothing. Man. Yeah, That's dude, funny, bro. I don't know, man. The social media is a wild thing, bro. We yeah, don't, we don't have a precedent for it in historically at all, bro. I, I, honestly, I want to talk about that because like social media so has onslaughted, onslaughted, <laughs> has onboarded like the banning of a lot of people. With this is crazy, Ferrari. So. I don't know if you know this, but Ferrari has like a, a list of people who are blacklisted from buying their vehicles. I thought there were going to be a list of black people that can buy their vehicles. <laughs> Do they have a whole list like, of those? Whoa. <laughs> no, they have a they have a blacklist of people who can't buy their cars, right? Um, what? Yeah, it's wild. It's, can I buy it? You can if you have enough money. I don't probably have money. they vet you, dude. They look at your social, your brand. They look at how like everything about you, and they go, "Oh, you're you're." Before capable. you can buy a Ferrari, exactly. they vet your social media. They vet everything. This they shit is getting brand. out of hand. They do that because Enzo Ferrari is such a he, he he thinks his cars are 
the Alpha and Omega. He wants to make sure everything's good and so the brand like the is consistent. So he's like Exactly. Well, he list of people who are banned from Ferrari, right? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber has a knack of getting cars and then customizing them to hell. Uh huh. So he immediately once you customize a car from Ferrari, they no longer consider it a Ferrari car. Uh, they can either they can they can't take it away from you, but they can buy it from you, buy it back. And also, if you if you customize it, if you customize it, you change the paint job. I'm not talking about any like you change the paint job alone, they'll ban you. If you change the paint job, if I bought a Ferrari, like a red, they're always red, basically, right? Yeah. Oh, there's a there's black ones. Well, it's Ferrari red. Yes. It is Ferrari. Oh, it's a specific color. Right. Okay, so if if I bought that and I bought it, I I spent you know 500 grand or something to buy this Ferrari, and I just and I put a racing stripe on it, or I I maybe I want to make it purple. You can't buy a Ferrari no more, because that's not how we intended it for. I can for, no longer for it buy a Ferrari. That's not how we intended it for to look. It's like more of an art piece, and all their stuff is that's limited. They don't make the same car. I mean, they they put out a certain amount of the, a certain model, and then that's it. You know what I mean? There's not a 2011 488 Ferrari or something. Like it's like different. Man. So oh, that's super luxury then. Right, right. They're so really like, they're really maintaining. That so that's brand. why they they're still in business kind of because the people you know people. You know, if you have a Ferrari, it's like, oh, you, you've passed the test and not failed. And so you got Kim Kardashian is also banned. Well, it's actually allegedly she's banned because she got gifted a Ferrari, um, from this like oil dude out who like gifted it to her. And it's like a, allegedly she's banned, but it's not been admitted, admitted. Okay. But she kind of was like, kind of, I kind of like a, put it out there a little bit, but not. Did she customize it? No, it's just that she was gifted it, and you're not allowed to. You gift can't be them. gifted a you Ferrari can't be gifted because they choose you by vetting you. You can't be gifted a Ferrari, bro. What the hell is this, bro? bro? Dead mouse. It's a car. Dead mouse put the the what is it? He put that that social inter- that internet meme, the nylon cat or whatever, on his car and painted it all blue with it. The cat flying through a rainbow, and he can't buy. It. Also, they sued him because it was like copyright infringement. That's what well. they tried to find their in and they got him. Dog, right? you know what I'm gonna do. What? When I get enough money to buy a Ferrari, I'm gonna buy a Ferrari and I'm gonna wrap that bitch in a vinyl that says "fuck Ferrari." <laughs> they will for Ingr- sure. Ingr- they will for sure find a way to sue you. They're like the Nintendo of car companies. Anyway, Disney's also notorious for that type of stupid Bro, bullshit they, too. This one guy is like paying back Nintendo like two million dollars, and it, he can't even afford it because he like uh he I think he live streamed their game when they asked him not to. Nintendo's savages when it comes to that stuff. Anyways. That's um, crazy. And 50 Cent's banned because he, out of 50 Cent fashion, bro, his car was sitting on the side of the street. The battery died. He towed it and he posted a photo and said, I don't want this Ferrari 488 no more. I'm about to get a smart car. <laughs> and they said he's banned because he made him look bad. <laughs> bro, so they could just ban you from that. I mean, well, they I, can just ban you because they, look, they have look, the right to ban the, you. The freedom of that is, listen, the freedom of, so part of that to me is hard body because you're yeah. like, this is, you buy it as is, yeah. whatever. But also, that's mad pretentious. Yeah. Which I guess is, is the point. It is. It's they, a Ferrari. They, they want people who have Ferraris to be like, you know, the yeah. perfect candidates. And they want them, oh, you have a Ferrari, bro. Wow. Hmm. It's different. It's different. It's like buying a piece of art that, you know, Virgil Abloh or something crazy. Anyways, a lot wow. of people, like not like uh, Black China, Nicolas Cage, these people got banned because they changed the colors. Black China changed the rims red and the car like off-white. Then you have Tyga, who bought the car and still owes forty five thousand dollars plus interest, so they banned him. <laughs> That's any car company, though. If yeah, you, Tyga, if you broke, bro, just don't like. Why are you buying cars you can't afford? You know what's funny? You know what I mean? Floyd Mayweather, Money Mayweather got banned because he's not. They don't. Ferrari said they don't classify him as a car collector. They, they what he does is he buys sports cars, flaunts it, and then sells them. And he does. He has a track record record of that. And yeah. He did that with Ferrari, and they're like, you're not buying another car from us. Dang, dude. Yeah, dude. So you have to read like a manual of how not to violate. You just like. They just want people who want their cars. They want people who like love cars and can afford it and will never sell. Like it's, I have a Ferrari. I'm keeping it for life. Okay. That's what they want. Okay. And we don't want, I want it how, how Enzo wanted it. But I, 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 I gotta, Enzo I gotta really sit it. with that and think about how I f- actually feel about the Ferrari brand given that. Cause that just seemed it to me. Off rip, it just seems a little too pretentious. Well, Christopher Nolan said that he's. This is in the similar vein. Christopher Nolan said that first of all, the Oppenheimer has a 100 theatrical, 100 day theatrical window, which means it's only really it's in theaters for 100 days, which is unheard of. He demanded it because Tenet didn't get this. Um, also, is that too long or too short? It's very long. It's very long. Three, three over three months. It's a long time for. A yeah. Movie. Okay. Yeah. That's right. A good point. So that plus um, uh, he 
It won't go. It won't go to any streaming platforms. You will not view it Ever. on a phone. He said, "I don't want you to view the movie on a phone." So think of it in a different art form. Think of it as Enzo is like, "I make cars as art. I don't make them just mm-hmm. for fun or like so you can mm-hmm. buy it." So you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like it's different for for them. And I don't. I mean, I'll never. If be you put it in the category of art, I can I can definitely see that because yeah, I wouldn't want. It's like, hey, bro, like. This is the way I intended this design to be. Everything, dude. Everything has the every piece of the car, mm. motor, screw. If you change anything, they're like, that is not how our engine was designed to run. Wow. That is not how we painted it. Our windows are not automatic, or they are automatic. Don't change it. Don't ask crew. Cr- no, but they, they're that bro, I serious. Put a, I, I put an air freshener in, in there, and they don't let me buy another they one. Go, they're like, that's not how the car we was wanted intended that, to we smell. We want it to be funky. <laughs> like, we want that smell like boo-boo. If you put an air freshener in the car, bro, that's not Ferrari. En- Enzo Ferrari's car smell like ass. Bro, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do... If if I ever get a ton of money, bro, I'm going to start a car company that's like a budget car company, but I'm going to keep the same standards. <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's like a Toyota equivalent. But, yeah, but yeah, but it's gonna it's gonna be some sh- shit where like if you improve anything on this car, like, yeah, but it's terrible. <laughs> it's like, but it's affordable. It's like a fifteen hundred dollar car, but you're suing people who can't. <laughs> but you're suing them bro, so they can't afford it. And, and you, you I'm, I'm gonna make it to where you can only buy the car with like a payday loan. <laughs> <laughs> they go. They, I feel like someone had to step in and go. This man is a evil man. He's, <laughs> he's a fraud. <laughs> he's a menace, bro. He he's hates a poor menace. people. He's a menace, bro. Why am I wearing these cat ears? It's jingling every time I turn my head. I got whiskers on, bro. I can't buy a Ferrari after this episode. Anyways. Dude. Yo. What? You might not be able to, bro. Because I'm talking Matter about Matter of fact, it. if I ever see you try to buy a Ferrari, like if I see like you send a letter in or something, bro, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make sure I send Enzo Ferrari this podcast. Is, he, is Enzo Ferrari still living? I don't know. Probably not. I, don't think I think so. they've been around for a long time. But his people who they're carrying on that man's legacy. They're yeah. not letting no, They're banning people, bro. I, I bet that man would hate social media. Yeah, wow. That's why he it, died in 1988. 1988. Rest in peace to. Enzo. I, I, don't even, even, I wasn't even born then. Do you want? Do you think Ferraris are cool? Like, would you? I want like a Ferraris. Ferrari? Okay. Would, actually, like, would know. I drive a Ferrari? Of course, you would drive a yeah, Ferrari. Yeah. But I would drive a Ferrari. But I don't necessarily think I would be like. That's not my first pick. Yeah. That's not my first pick. My my dream. Well, my achievable dream car as it stands right now, because I haven't looked at like I don't mm-hmm. even. My achievable dream car is either a BMW i8 or an Audi R8. Okay. Those are my two. Now, I haven't, I've, I've driven an i8. I've never driven an R8. So, but I, I remember being really into like how, how the car looked and what people were saying about it and the handling and stuff. I, I know you like, you like a more vintage. Aesthetic. I was going to say, I take a, I take a, uh, I like the vintage. It's either vintage or classy, not sportsy. Um, okay. like a, a more, I don't know which car this would be, but a classier Aston Martin. Aston that, Martin's When you pull up to bro. one of them little, yeah. oh, them little U-shaped roundabouts, you hop out, you look like, you know, James, James Bond. Bond. That's yeah. what I want. Aston Martin. If it's not, if that's the high class. If it's vintage, I want like a, I mean, a vintage Ferrari would be hard. Those are cool. Um, the vintage Ferraris are kind of sick. They're sick. They I see those a, all the time in the synth wave, like mock Exactly those. <laughs> yeah, they make them kind of look goofy in those sometimes. Yeah, but that's true, yeah, that's true. Uh, something like that. Or Would you drive a like DeLorean? Like if you, bro, if you had no, bro. <laughs> it's such a prop car. It's like something. It's like getting a cyber truck. It's you know what I mean? Like I'm not getting a, a DeLorean. No, you wouldn't drive the cyber truck, bro. We we know someone who owns one of the a, De- a DeLorean. Remember? Do we? David at Racktop. Oh yeah. We were on oh that shoot sick. That one time. Yeah, he pulled up the DeLorean to the shoot. That's and we were crazy. Like, and he was like, "Yeah, this one's highly like I can I have to be on every shoot that this one's on." Wow. Because he got the actual DeLorean of one of the props. That's amazing. Crazy, bro. That's insane. Would you drive a DeLorean? Uh, you yeah. Go, you go, if I want to go back in time, <laughs> what other reason do I have? Yeah. To, I'm like, no, Nate, that was a movie, bro. <laughs> of course I want to time travel. You go, are you asking me do I want to go back to the Does future? it have a flux capacitor in the back? Is there enough plutonium for you go, me to... You go, all I got to do is go, go back before 88. you ask me this what question is it, Greg? your ass? Isn't Greg like 188 <laughs> or was it 88 miles per hour or something like that? I can't remember. Have you seen that? That's the max speed. I don't know why I think Greg likes Back to the Future. Or knows anything about it. Yeah, I don't know why. I, th- I guess because you like Star Wars and stuff. Sorry. Greg doesn't like things. I, I thought he he's a nihilist. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, dude. We're never going to be able to afford a Ferrari. <laughs> like, oh, how much are Bro, they? Ma- can you please, listen, if y'all blow this podcast up, actually, matter of fact, if you like and subscribe and this podcast blows up, we'll buy a Ferrari and we'll do something stupid with it. <laughs> we'll do something Nate, you're, heinous. No, we won't, though. We can't afford one. We can't afford one even if it blows up. If it up. blows up. 
we're going to keep our brand squeaky <laughs> clean until I get to desecrate the Ferrari name. Like and subscribe to this podcast. And if you like and subscribe to this podcast, I promise I'll wear a choke collar next time with this. If we get 10,000, if we get 10,000 views, views on one of our videos, I'll wear the choke collar latex suit. <laughs> The cat ears. I don't even want to see you in a latex suit, bro. Like, scrap that. Uh-huh. Scrap that. Bro, if we get, uh, listen, if we get a thick as these Ferrari belt, we should add, like, the, you know, like, the dudes that drive those trucks and just stick, like, nuts. <laughs> bro, that's so corny. Bro, why do people do that? Why do grown bro? men do that? I, they, I guess they just think it's funny, bro. Bro, I they know. put the nuts on the truck is the, like, 37 year old men were doing that. Yeah. Who thought that was a good idea? That's not funny though. I, I Yo, don't know. Real clip. I seen it. I seen it. You know, I watch for some reason. This is funny. Funny fact about me is I watch, I find myself watching body cam footage of like crazy incidents of cops all the time. Uh-huh. Just cause I, I like to see, for one, I like to see cops be take their authority to be questioned because a lot of times they're like power hungry. Yeah. yeah. And then also I like to see like funny people, like citizens doing stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. While well, seeing Lauren, this dude said, um, on the back of his truck, he had a, a sticker on the back of his window that said, I eat ass. And he was just, <laughs> bro, he was driving around, bro. Right. And the cop pulled him over and was like, he's like, you can't have that on your, your car. And he was like, if my, he's like, if my kids seen that while we're driving, they asked me, what does I eat beep mean? That's what he said. That's what it beeped it out. And he was like, I would be furious. And the guy was like, okay, I'm in, he's like, wrote him a ticket. He's like, I'm going to need you to take one of those stickers off. And the guy goes, you will not infringe on my first amendment rights and got back in the car and drove off. And the cop didn't do anything. And I was like, bro, why is that man driving around with that? I don't, well, yeah, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. That's funny, though. It's funny, bro. People are, but he was, yeah, it just, it's funny what grown men and women will do, bro. Kind of on that topic, bro, I saw somebody at the mall the other day that had a full bodysuit on, and it just said in big letters, fuck you repeated over the entire thing. And what? I was like, and we were just like literally at Grand Ole Opry. Oh, that was the other day? Yesterday? No, no, no. It was, oh. it was, it was a couple weeks ago, but it was at the Opry. Yeah. Where'd they get that shirt from, bro? It wasn't even a shirt, bro. It was a full, it was a full, like, what? Top to bottom. Like, I don't know if it was a onesie or what, but yeah, dude, just, so it, just F you over the whole thing. I'm like, dog. Honestly, like, dude, anything that people are doing, but we're not doing is stupid. It's dumb, dude. <laughs> Says the dude with just cat ears and whiskers. <laughs> Wait, hey, I got another one, bro. I got another one. Grown men wearing tees like that say stuff like sarcasm is my love language. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> like, I've seen some of the worst graphic. I'm like, what would possess you to wear, to that, wear something? Sarcasm is my love language, bro. It's so stupid. I feel that they, way they about, even, like, this is more subtle, but I feel that way about the don't tread on me thing. It sounds just so corny to don't me. Don't tread on me. Yeah, with the or snake. what? What, dude? Or what about like the uh, dog, the like Bugs Bunny, like smoking a joint and it's got like glitter and, and like stacks of money beside it him. Stacks of money. <laughs> it's like, bro. Yeah, it's like we really thugged out business, bro. Like, I'm like, like, huh? <laughs> yo, yeah. I don't know huh? that. That's I don't get that culture at all. I'm not in that pocket of culture at all. Even when people were rocking the like Avengers backpacks. Like miniature backpacks in yeah. high school, yeah. And like you know, Drewski made that video where that, that Drewski dude, he had, a, so he had funny. the Hulk on his backpack, and I'm like, bro, I don't get that culture at all. Like, it's like you're half gangster, half Marvel nerd. I don't know. Like, bro, I get, I don't know. I, don't know. Funny, I guess bro. it's a cool little juxtaposition. No, nah, I, I, the, yeah, I have a, I have some people in my family who wear who wear shirts like that. The worst ones are Rue Twenty One, where they used to have like the, uh, it would just say swag on it. <laughs> swag, bro. Yes, bro. Are be we like, doing the same thing with with like when we put Japanese letters on stuff? A thousand our, our, percent. We're I've putting heard, it on a shirt and it looks cool, and then and then actually it's it's it says I'm gay on it, <laughs> yeah, in Japanese, and we're like, bro, what? I've heard of a couple stories of people trying to get like love, not hate, or something in Japanese, and it says something wrong, like on. You I'm just like, need to do your due diligence before you put something permanent on your body. Yes, I hey, you remember that chick that in Vegas that got Drake in huge letters across her forehead? Seriously. Yeah, bro. And t- tattoo. And Drake was like, "You ne- like don't said, do that. Like get get that removed. Like why would you?" That's no, no, no. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, he it went viral. This is what happened. This is a long time ago. I think yeah. it was when we were in high school. It went viral, and he was like, fl- he was pissed off at the tattoo artist. He was like, "Why would you let her do this?" Yeah. 
Why, yeah, yeah why? Crazy. Yeah, she paid for it. I guess. Yeah, I would tell her no if I was a tattoo artist, though. That's so stupid. Didn't you have someone who gave you a, a got a tattoo of you though? I think there's two people. Nate Rose. No, there's this girl named Megan. Uh, I know you saw. Who's about. like a big super fan? She's got she's got the Nate Rose like stock sign on her hand, and there's my my homie Adam Baxter from college got the uh, Nate Rose Media logo. Uh, Nate Rose on, Media, really? Yeah, yeah. On his uh, Out of all the logos. I mean, well, I think I I don't know if I don't know if the put, logo he put Nate before. Rose Media on him. No, it I mean, was like I, the crown. It was cool. the crown with the rose that oh, I used to. Oh, oh, okay. remember? I got you. I remember when you, now. When, yeah, yeah. Anyway, man, I uh, I'm very excited for what we got going on for the rest of this. Eliki's been coming up with some good games, even though I'm sitting here wearing cat whiskers and cat ears. <laughs> she originally had the choke collar lined up. That's true. And we were like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> You don't want to put it on, David? Give it to me. Let me see. Toss it in here. Toss it in here. What kind of throw is that? Wow. I just want y'all to know that this is what Aliki does. Aliki goes on Amazon and she, she goes searches crazy. up. She searches up BDSM things that I can like. She literally does that. When I first seen this, it was so. First of all, I don't know if y'all know this, but this podcast studio was in Nate's house. I come here every Sunday, and sometimes I see like props and stuff. And Aliki gets ready for the game. Well, we came. Me and Nate had a shoot, so I came here a couple days ago. Seen this on the table. I mean, this man's living with this man's living with his wife. So I'm like, I literally asked that man. I said, "What are y'all?" I was like, "Bro, what are y'all doing?" I was like, "Did y'all?" And he goes, "Actually, bro, let me tell you." And it sounded like he was about to tell me for real, like that they were doing some stuff. I was like, "Nate, whoa, bro, like we're not like that's not in my business. You're doing way too much." He goes, "No, this is the attack cat thing." I was like, the "Oh, attack cat, yeah, dude, attack cat thing, got you." All right, bro. Well, hey, another great podcast in the books. We out of here. We're gonna watch this Barbie movie. I'm sitting this off my face, Aliki. Can you throw me a wet wipe, please? Mm, no. Okay. Yeah, baby, need top five when I'm done going mental. Yeah, I'm locked in. You can peep my condition and the lab all winter. All summer. Yeah, I went dumb. Now I'm about to go dumb.